we were asking questions why was the new testament written or why was it necessary for the apostles to write it and we said first okay the first reason for them to write the new testament was to safeguard the gospel If they depended on the oral traditions, then there was no guarantee that the gospel would be the same for us today as it used to be in the early time. And then secondly we say, The New Testament was written to lay the foundation for church and Christian life. <coughs> Today we would not know what it is to be a Christian if we did not have the New Testament. And then thirdly we say it was written to edify the church, to make us like Christ. It is the food by which we exist in our spirit. Without the spiritual nourishment of the word of God, we would not survive spiritually. The spiritual food. So therefore, God inspired the apostles to put together some of these books and letters so that today we can be completely depend on this. So how many books are there in the New Testament? Twenty? Seven. Okay. So, how do you divide these books in the New Testament? For example, the Bible is divided into two parts, old and new. And the Old Testament is also divided into three or four categories. In the same way, New Testament also can be divided into certain categories. How do you divide it? Do you have any idea? All right. The first four books we call it what? The gospel. When we talk about the gospels, we immediately think about Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Right. So after the gospel, what comes? Acts is the history of the church, how church began to expand as we were talking about in our previous class. Then, so first the gospel, second the history and then Then we have epistles of Paul. So all together, most of them are epistles or letters. So Paul, how many people write letter in the New Testament? Paul. Peter. Peter. John, who else? Okay, we'll see. Paul, Peter, John, James, and Jude. Johanna, right. These are letters. From gospel 
to letter if there was no book of acts we would have very difficult time chen chin cha le le kha thon o min tu ko te yong lo ta sen chuan yi hun har sa ta chu kan tong ve kho pang because the gospel talk about jesus christ and then the letters are talking about christian life what happened in the middle we would have no idea chen chin cha chuan yi jesus christ yeah talk about christ and his teaching and then the gospel uh, letters talk about christian life chen chin cha chuan yi so christa yi so christa chu chang a so ya tin thon chun tin le kha thon chuan christian nun dan kong tang tak a so ya tin akar akar tu mi kar a chun enge om kan che lo chun ban boi en boi ve khop do ni so therefore we have in the middle the bridge that is the book of acts which is the history of the church chu ban chuan chen chin cha le ตัวนี้มีเสียเทียมที่เจอชื่อชนติดเก่าเต้ลงตาแล้วอุ้มตาแล้วนั่นคือสิ่งที่เราเรียกว่าการเรียนรู้ในพระคัมภีร์ Acts is the history that talked about what happened after Christ and how did church expand throughout the world. And then we have the letters that talk about how should we in the world live as Christians. เฮคอมเวลาเฮนเอ็นติงเอคริสเตียนอังอินคริสเตียนกันอังอินเอ็นติงเอคอมเวลากันหนุนแทงกันหนุนดาตูมีจิตเตเลนเอนเนนคัม
generally in an in a simple Christian faith, we think Matthew must be the first book, right? Ah, uh, atlang pa ngay ang John Matthew, kaya mas sabi tayo kung ngay. Orang, alright. Hindi ka. Kung siya dan pa ngay. Oh, Mark would be. Uh, somehow we think the Gospels were written first, right? Um, ah, John Chin Chao Chu siya mas sa ganit ni kaya jing lang kui. Okay, that is. Uh, natural understanding as we read the structure of the new testament but gospels were written much later than the letters most of the, some of the letters not all so most likely today we will not <coughs> be able to go into all the books but i just want you have a small kind of a bird's eye view of the books of the new testament so for example as we read the bible in the new testament we come to the gospel first the acts and the letters and the revelation uh, bible it was later organized by the pastors and theologians so that we will be able to read the Bible in a proper context. But in the process of writing, some of the letters written by Paul were the first books of the New Testament. Now again, remember what we were talking about Paul in our previous class. He was on the way to Damascus. And then, at that humor, he was the enemy of Christ, enemy of the church. But Jesus arrested him, so to say, on the road to Damascus. And then he said, I have chosen you to be the apostle to the Gentiles. But it took many years for Paul to realize that call that Jesus had given to him. Three years he was somewhere in Arabia. We don't know what he was doing. After three years he went to Jerusalem and Jerusalem just said, Paul, you're too big of trouble for us. Please go back to your hometown. <coughs> then Paul goes all the way to Tarsus in his hometown and nearly five years are lost again. And then Barnabas, when he went to Antioch and remembers Paul, goes to Tarsus and brings him back. In Acts chapter 13, when they had spent one year together doing the ministry in Antioch, that is the first time God says, now Barnabas and Paul go into the world to preach the gospel. So this may be about 10 years later of the, uh, the ascension of Christ or from the day of Pentecost. So when was Jesus crucified according to the calendar? Calendar, calendar, atranga ini isu kita tu entik a kende, entik a kende kahang ini, entik a kahang ini kende. Think about it. AD what year? About thirty. Okay, let's say AD thirty. AD som tum vela kan. Jesus was thirty plus years old, right? Thirty three something. Isu kita tu kum som tum em, kum som tum betul mingkar vela. So. Somewhere in AD 30, he was crucified. So let's say Paul's conversion took place maybe three or four years after. 
So during this time they went to visit uh, evangelized this Asia Minor that is in your map there. So they evangelized and came back. After coming back, most likely, uh, we don't have the definitive answer, but most likely Paul writes Galatia. The scholars still are not able to agree whether Galatian was the first or the Thessalonian was the first. Either way, Paul was the first person to write letter to the Christian community. Yes, they had some form of written format of the gospel in the hand of the apostles at that time. But we have no uh, survival of any kind of document from that time. So the only surviving letters, the first earliest document are the Paul's letters. So let me therefore go in through your note before our time runs out. In page number three there you see Paul's letter. Let's see. Paul, how many letters Paul wrote in your understanding? Okay, we'll count them slowly, okay? I'll give you the number, it's written there. Paul wrote 13 letters. And some, some people even believe Paul is the one who wrote Hebrews also. If that is the case, then 14 letters. So if we are not so sure about Hebrew, at least definitely he wrote 13 letters. So in the, first, in the first column there is an approximate date. And then the second column is the major events. In the third column the, the book of Acts reference. In the fourth column, approximate time period, how much time it must have taken. And then in the last, you see the names of the letters that Paul wrote. So I was talking about Paul's conversion took place sometime, what year? About 34, 35, okay? These are approximate. We don't have the definitive date, but we can make sure that this either 34, 35. And then we see three year period there. And then 37, he comes to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, and he goes to Tarsus, Syria, Cilicia, but we don't have any idea what he did during this time. And there is no definite, uh, like how many years they haven't uh, 
but mostly we serve five seven years there. And then in 46, 47 AD, what happened? Paul comes to Antioch. Antioch Okay, let's let's wait for a moment here. When Paul was converted on the road to Damascus and came back to Jerusalem after three years, who was the man that helped Paul? Yeah, Okay, maybe you don't remember. You have to read the Bible again. I think. The apostles did not believe Paul. They knew he was the enemy of the church. He must have been genuinely sharing his testimony how Jesus appeared to him, but they didn't believe him. But when Barnabas heard him, he believed him. Then Barnabas told Peter and John, you must listen to this young man. And after that they listened to him, and they kept him for two weeks in Jerusalem. But because he was full of zeal, began to preach the gospel in temples in every area. The Jews began to be angry at Paul that one time he was supposed to kill them and now he is preaching the gospel. Peter, John and other people, the apostles, they realized that Paul is going to create a problem for them. Peter and Paul Peter and John. Peter and John. John and John. Hemi Hien Kraike Manitan Buana Siam Don in Tia somehow three years ago there was a serious persecution in the book of Acts we saw like in the first class but now again this man is going to stir up the persecution so Peter and other apostles said to Paul, please go away from Jerusalem, don't stay here, we don't want any more persecution. And the Bible says they took him to Caesarea and from there they sent him to Tarsus. Can you see how, how sad, how discouraged Paul must have been? He had great excitement, great zeal for the kingdom of God, but the church says no. You don't fit into our program. This is a sad story of the church throughout history. Many great men and women whom God called, they were always rejected by the church. Because the church always wants to have control. And they want to have order and structure and everything proper. In their desire to find order and peace and progress, they stop listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that is why God always works outside the structure or institutional church. 
Many great revivals took place not inside the church, outside the church. Revival And then that revival also becomes a church. And they also start institutionalizing, making rules and regulations to control it. And after some time, they also become just like the church. They were outside before. And maybe hundred years later or two hundred years again God will have to work outside that church. When Paul was called by Christ to become an apostle to the Gentiles, the church says, No, thank you. So now nearly seven, eight years have gone, he is lost in Tarsus. And then same Barnabas was sent by the apostle to Antioch to look after the new church. When Barnabas went to Antioch, he saw how the Gentiles were coming in hundreds and thousands of people into the church. But Barnabas was not a great teacher. He was a great minister, a great comforter, a great shepherd. You know the meaning of Barnabas' name? Son of encouragement. Encourage. Yeah, you are sad or you are depressed and someone yeah. says, Oh, brother, oh, sister, don't, don't be sad. There is a God, there is a God. You see, first time when Paul was in Jerusalem, nobody listened to him and he was very sad, definitely. Paul, Paul. And then when Barnabas heard this young man, he said, I think there is something special in this young man. And now he is in Antioch, a new Gentile church, and he has no idea how to handle this church. The Bible says Barnabas was so happy to see people come to Christ. But then he had to teach these Gentiles how to be Christian. Then he remembered Paul again. His name was Saul until then, of course. He remembered Paul was a scholar. He remember how he said he was the student of Gamaliel, one of the greatest Hebrew teachers. And he remember how Paul was persecuting the Christians and how God miraculously saved him. So Barnabas thought, if I can find this young man, bring him to Antioch, he will be a great instrument. Compared to Jerusalem, uh, Antioch was closer to Tarsus. Jerusalem, 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 Antioch, 
So Barnabas takes a long journey to go to Tarsus to look for Saul. I strongly believe by until this time Barnabas, uh, sorry, Paul must be or Saul must be very sad and depressed and lonely man. His parents were strong Hebrew or Jewish people in Tarsus. They wanted their son to be one of the great Jewish scholar leader. Therefore, they sent him to Jerusalem in his young age to study the law of Moses. And they made sure that he gets the chance to study under the best teachers of that time. It's like today it's going to Oxford or Harvard or all these famous universities to get your PhD. So Paul had done it. He had achieved great success. Parents were so proud of him. But finally he comes home empty handed. Rejected by the Jewish community. And even rejected by Christian community. And the gospel he tried to preach and they never listened to him. You know, when your son is poor and no money and no success, do parents listen to him? That is same back then, that is still the same now also. If, if someone from Mizoram sends their son to Bombay or Delhi or Bangalore to study and but that son comes back with the sadhu dress, how they will fit? Mizoram entering and fa Bombay at the Lekazi Turin and an 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 Kaltira Nimasela Sadhu in Duja Sankin and Kalchukle Tasela and King. And he comes home and said, Oh, father, mother, you are wrong. This is the right way. You have to believe. You have to become Sadhu. And an an Aran Hoa and an Nila Patina. How can you go to in 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 here? Hello, near to not him. He meets a dog Sadhu in the Nai in Lodi Tase. When they send their son to Bangalore or Bombay or wherever, they would be dreaming, my son is going to be doctor or engineer or tomorrow maybe be a politician or chief minister or something. But he comes as a Hindu sadhu. They will say, get out of my house. You wasted our money. You destroyed our reputation. You're not our son. I think that's what happened to Paul. Because we see no evidence in the Bible that there was a church or gospel preaching anything during those almost 10 year period. Even after he becomes a successful missionary, we don't see any evidence of ministry taking place in Tarsus. Why do you think so? Jesus was not welcomed only one town in Israel. Where was it? Where was it? You don't know, okay. Where was he born? Nazareth. Nazareth rejected Jesus Christ. They did not believe him. 
and he never went back there. Nazareth Asilena Asilena to Tuma Nasha Dulova to an Amatu and no Chakani. That's what he said the prophet has no respect in his own hometown. To two Vantun, two Vantun is what you say. He is only to Amarina to one Zona. So you can imagine Paul's condition, how sad and depressed and discouraged he was. Then about somewhere 45, 46, 47, during that period, Barnabas comes suddenly one day and says, Paul, do you remember me? 45, 46, 47, I'm sure when he first saw Barnabas, they must have hugged each other and cried for a long time. And then Barnabas said, Paul, I have come to look for you. I need your help. I want you to come with me to Antioch. Can you imagine if there was no Barnabas, what would have happened to Paul? One man can affect one man's life and the whole world could be different. So when, as Christians, we may sometimes think, oh, I'm not so famous, I am not so strong, I am don't, I don't have an ability to do something. But if we can influence one person's life, we will never know what that person can do for God. You know, God works hand to hand with us. The logos that we are talking about is now has to be spoken through our mouth. And therefore, even if for one person we minister, if one person's life we touch means that person will touch how many lives we don't know. So then let us now, 48 or 49, Paul and Barnabas to first missionary journey. Right after this missionary journey, the book of Galatians must have been written. Because their first missionary journey was in the province of Galicia. And then after the Galatian churches came to Christ and Paul said, no need circumcision. Salvation is by faith. And again, the Jerusalem church was not happy. Then there is a first church council taking place about AD 50. That you can see in Acts chapter 15. After the uh, Jerusalem Council decided, okay, no need Gentiles to be circumcised. Jerusalem Council Paul and Barnabas again wanted to go for a second missionary journey. But they had some misunderstanding. Why was the misunderstanding? Do you remember? Paul and Barnabas had a very big misunderstanding. During the first missionary journey, Paul, Barnabas and John Mark, three of them were there. 
This John Mark was very young man. So after traveling from Antioch to the Cyprus and then crossing from Cyprus, the ocean sea sickness, this young man was so discouraged. Just, just as they landed in Asia Minor, he went back home. Paul was so angry at him. He was young and he could carry their bag and help them, but now these Barnabas was old. Paul was a middle-aged man. So angry at Mark. John Mark. His name is Mark, the one who wrote the Gospel of Mark. John Mark. He was angry. But the second missionary journey, when they started, John Mark said to Barnabas, Uncle, I also, again, I want to go. So the second missionary, Uncle, John John Chu, Margal, John John Chang Margal, Zek Tu, John Mark, Chun, Milun, Zui Le, Tum Ta. He said, I'm so sorry, I made a terrible mistake. I want to, I want to rectify my mistakes. So, Amma, Chu Chuan, Niya Kathir 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 Barnabas said, okay, you made a mistake, you want to repent, and okay, I'll give you a second chance. But Paul says, no way. He was unfaithful. We cannot give him a second chance. They became so... They had a heated argument. Then the Bible says, Barnabas took John Mark and went to Cyprus. And Paul took Silas and others and went to the northern province of Asia Minor. Paul was still very enthusiastic and excited for the ministry and he could not see how can we forgive a person who betrayed once. But you have to understand, Barnabas has a heart of comfort. Just like he made Paul's life, he wanted to make John Mark's life also. Even though we don't hear after this about what happened to Barnabas, but we know John Mark. He became, after possibly Barnabas died and then John became a disciple of Peter. And later he would write the Gospel of Mark. So you have to see, this is what happening in Acts chapter 15, 16 now. So the second missionary journey takes 51, 53, all the way to Corinthian. Paul started the church in Philippi, Thessalonica, and he went to Athens but could not really succeed and went to Corinth. Okay, why is Athens so famous? Athens Anybody has an idea? Culture? Right, Greek culture. Uh, gods also, right? Greek gods, culture, religion, philosophy. Athens was the center of intellect 
at that time. So Paul preached a famous sermon in Athens. And that is where we see the unknown God also. They worship so many gods that some gods they didn't even know but they were worshipping. But he could not be successful so he moved to Corinth. And he met a couple, a Jewish couple who were expelled from Rome. Their name is Priscilla and Aquila. With them he began to work as a tent maker. As he was working with them in Corinth, a powerful church came into existence. So while he was in Corinth, he wrote Thessalonian letters. And then after that, again, after one and a half year in Corinth, he came back to Antioch. After spending a few months there, again in 54, he started third missionary journey. This time he spent three years in Ephesus. While he was in Ephesus, he writes Corinthian letters. It's about 54, 55, 57 AD. And uh, sometimes later, he even writes Romans uh, when he maybe he was on some other places, not in Ephesus at that time. And then finally, we see Paul's last uh, farewell message in Ephesus and goes to Jerusalem. Fifty-seven AD, he was arrested in Jerusalem. Fifty-seven AD, Jerusalem, and then it took almost two years for him to go to Rome as a prisoner from Jerusalem. Okay, now can you tell why was he arrested? Do you remember why was Paul arrested in Jerusalem? Okay. okay. Some Jews who were following Paul, they said this man is anti Moses, anti law. Uh, so they inspired the Jewish community in Jerusalem said this he is destroying the law of Moses, he is against the Jewish traditions. Just like they had killed Jesus, they wanted to kill Paul also. But as this plot was going on, he said, I want to appeal to Caesar. You know, that time, a Roman citizen had tremendous authority and power and rights. The Roman law was that no Roman citizen could be beaten or put in prison without the proper judiciary system. Uh, 
If a citizen is innocent and somehow there is a plot against him to destroy or kill him, he could appeal to Caesar that is like we appeal to Supreme Court in India. So Paul being a citizen of Rome, he said, I don't want to die in your hand because I'm an innocent person, so I appeal to Caesar. So to take him from Jerusalem to Rome, it took nearly two years. He was kept in Caesarea nearly for two years in prison. So finally, in 59 AD, he was taken to Rome, 59, 60 sometime. You know the Paul's journey to Rome in Book of Acts? Acts 27, 28 talks about the trouble in the sea, how miraculously God saved him, and then all the the ship sang. So he was kept in Roman prison for almost about two, two, three, two years like that, two, three years. So at that time he wrote Ephesians, Colossians and Philippian, uh, Philemon. Then, most likely, he was released after that. And uh, later, he was arrested again. This time, he was put in prison for a long time. Most likely he wrote Philippians or uh, we are not so sure but most likely he wrote Philippians, Timothy and Titus. Second Timothy is Paul's last letter. In 2 Timothy, Timothy was in Ephesus at that time. So he writes this letter to Timothy saying, Timothy, please come back before winter. You know, Rome is a cold place during the winter. And he said, when you come back, I left my overcoat in Troas, so please bring that coat also because it's very cold here. And bring some of the parchment that I would still write some letters. You see, Paul was a great apostle. He had a great beginning. He had great education. He had great uh, citizen of Rome. Like today, if you're an American citizen, how proud people are. You know, in Indian uh, marriage advertisement, they say, green card holder means so many must marry them. America, John, green card holder, the can who John, me, me, what they are? In matrimonial advertisement, marriage advertisement, they say green card holder of America means many girls want to marry them. Ah, advertisement and so green card holder and the like John, we don't take it and need to treat any. Being a citizen of Rome was better than being a citizen of America at this time. Ah, Rome, me, like, Rome, me, like, sunny, to, 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 America, Ram, le, me, like, sunny, I don't. Paul had a great future. He could have all the money he wanted. 
He could have name and fame and reputation. In Philippians, he said, I counted them like cow dung. Now he is in Rome as a prisoner. The first prison was better. He was kept in a house. He could not leave the house, but he could live like a house. But this prison was deep in the dungeon, like a prisoner held in chains. He has no warm clothes. He is old. He has no family. He has no money. He has no reputation, no fame. And he is telling Timothy, please come back before winter. Bring me my old coat. Compare that to today's pastors and missionaries. They want to live in luxurious villas. They want, they want to have the, all the luxuries of this world. And even we talk about the Western missionaries when they come to places like India or Nepal. Before they arrive to this mission field, the truckloads of their household items come first. And when they come to the mission field, then they hire their cooks, their gardener, their watchmen, their drivers, and they live like a big businessman. Look at the greatest missionary in the prison cell asking for his old coat. Compared to these modern day famous pastors and preachers who are millionaires, he was a miserable failure. Was he a failure? And the history says when Timothy was rushing to Rome to meet Paul, he was killed before even Timothy could come. His spiritual son could not even see him. He was killed before Timothy arrived. But today, he has left nearly half of the New Testament for us. So this is how the Kingdom of God is advancing to the power of Logos. The gospel that we have in our hand, we have to speak it from our mouth. If we can touch one human life, and that's all we could do. And if we have to die like a failure or miserable in the eyes of the world, but in the eyes of God, Paul says there is a crown laid before for me. And this crown is not only for me, but for everyone those who will walk through the path that I have walked. See, Puya, me and some other brothers, we are struggling in Guwahati to, to establish a church. Yeah, humanly speaking, it's very discouraging. But every time we feel discouraged, we look to what Paul did for us. 
He gave us these precious, precious letters. Inspired under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And these letters tell us how to live for God. These letters tell us how to do service for the kingdom of God. So this is the New Testament we are talking about. So I hope in your life, in your family, in your mother or brother, or whatever you are doing, do it for the kingdom of God. And then your life becomes a living letter. You may not be able to write a letter like Paul did. But you can become a letter. And people when they read you, they will see Christ. Amen? Okay, let us stop today.